Hello and welcome once again to the Akash Baiju's Jai channel. My name is Atiulla and I'm back with another live session on Jai Mission 2022. All right, so before we begin, just let me know if you can hear me properly and if you can see me clearly. All right, quickly give me a thumbs up, give me a yes so that we can start the session. All right, so people joining in. TBS Works, Aryan Kumar, Rishabh, good evening, a very warm welcome. How are you guys? How is it going? All right, TBS Works is asking, sir, math kaise kare? So, a um, better idea would be to ask someone who teaches math and there are math sessions going on as well. So, yeah, definitely post your question there and uh, the people who are uh, more adept to help you there would certainly help you there. All right, Aryan is asking, sir, how to improve mechanics? All right, so uh, mechanics, See if you are appearing for JEE 2022 and which means that you are appearing in 2-3 months then just focus on uh, previous year papers that's what we, you need to focus on. Uh, solve previous year papers, pick out the things which are uh, not very clear, go back and revise it but my suggestion would be don't worry too much about mechanics. Okay, Solve previous year papers um, and focus on your strength in mechanics. Okay. Uh, don't worry too much about mechanics if you are not able to do very difficult questions, very obscure questions, not a problem at all. Uh, what you should do is focus on more class 12 syllabus because that is more rich in uh, return. Okay, we, we call it a high ROI topic because the effort is minimum but the result is going to be very, very good. All right, more people joining in. Rishabh, Samiran, Ramesh, Anbu. Uh, good evening guys, how are you? Mission IIT, Namaste, good evening, Hyper Gaming, alright. We, so we have all our audience and I think uh, we are all set to start the session. Alright, so uh, JEE Mission 2022, in this session we are going to take up nuclei and radioactivity. Another very simple topic, another very scoring topic and another topic which you cannot miss or you cannot afford to neglect okay very very high ROI topic so let's get this start the I'm sorry let's get this session started all right so you know the drill I'm going to throw questions at you uh, be ready with your notebook and pen we are going to solve all the questions together and then we are going to discuss the main objective of these sessions are to clarify the concepts to revise the concepts okay so that's where uh, the important discussion is going to go. All right, so let's start. Here's the first question for you. Calculate the Q value in the following decays. Okay, so this is oxygen 19. This decays into fluorine 19 plus an electron plus an antineutrino. And there's another nuclear reaction, aluminum 25, that disintegrates into magnesium 25 plus a positron and plus a neutrino. Okay. So the masses, atomic masses of all these elements is given. What we need to find out is what is the Q value. All right, that's the question. Uh, read the question again if you want. Note the reactions down if you want. But the first thing I want to understand from you is, number one, what is Q value? Can anyone explain to me what is Q value? And number two, I want to understand is, can you identify these reactions, these nuclear reactions? All right, these two nuclear reactions that we are talking about, can you identify these nuclear reactions? Okay, they have a very, very specific name. Can you identify them? All right, quickly let me know in the live chat and then we are going to proceed our discussion. All right, anyone? All right, uh, Sujal is asking, sir, it is useful for need to, it is useful for need to, oh, oh my God, uh, you don't have to go on and repeat. Yes, it is certainly need, useful for need also because the syllabus is the same. So yes, it'll, it is going to be helpful for need as well. All right, guys, what is Q value? Can anyone tell me what is Q value? And then can anyone tell me what is what can you identify those two reactions okay very very specific reactions they have a very special name can you identify these okay uh, please show previous slide once more not a problem okay Niranjan this is the question 
So, here is the reaction, here are the two reactions, the necessary data is here, we have the atomic masses of all the elements, we need to find out what is the Q value. Alright, so let us see, the Q value for a reaction is given as Ui minus Uf, okay. What is Ui? Ui is the mass of the reactant, okay, Ui is the mass of the reactant. So, first what we need to do is we need to calculate the mass defect, okay. How do we calculate the mass defect? So, we calculate the mass of the reactant and these are nuclear reactions. So, the masses I am writing is corresponding to the nuclear masses, okay. So, we take the mass of the reactants, total mass of the reactants minus the total mass of the products, okay. And then we know Einstein's equation, the most famous equation E is equal to mc square, okay. So, this is called the mass defect and if we multiply it by c square, we are going to get the equivalent energy, okay. So, this is a q value of a reaction. Very important here that this is ui minus uf, not uf minus ui, okay. We always write q value as ui minus uf. All right, perfect. Amount of energy absorbed or released is called Q value, absolutely. Okay, so if Q value comes out to be positive, which means that energy is going to be released, and if Q uh, value comes out to be negative, which means that energy is required for that reaction to happen. Okay, and Ashish is absolutely right. The first reaction is beta decay, and the second reaction is beta plus decay. Okay, so look at this reaction. This is oxygen 819, so I can put the atomic number here also. So, 8O19, this gets trans, uh, this gets transformed or this reacts into F199, so 19F9 is fluorine, okay. And then we have this electron which is the beta particle, okay, that is the beta minus particle and then we have the anti neutrino, is that right? Alright, perfect, so let us do this. Now, what we also need to remember here is that these are the masses of the nucleus. Okay, so the mass we are talking about is masses of the nucleus because this is a nuclear reaction. But what we do is we write this in form of atomic masses. Okay, so we take the mass of the nucleus by taking the atomic mass minus the mass of the electrons. Is that right? So if I have to find the mass of the nucleus, then I'll take the mass of the entire atom and I'll subtract the mass of the electrons. Okay, so if you do that, what you're going to get is mass of O19 minus mass of F, sorry, mass of O19 minus mass of F19 multiplied by C square, okay. So, you can note that here the atomic masses are going, getting subtracted because what happens is that the mass of electrons get cancelled from both sides, alright. Do you remember this? Okay, and it is important to remember the Q value of all the major reactions of alpha decay, of beta decay, of beta plus decay, beta minus decay, right. We need to uh, know the Q value of these typical reactions, alright. So, this is very simple now, very straightforward. What is mass of oxygen 19? It is 19.003576 and what is U? U is atomic mass unit, okay. Minus mass of fluorine 19 which is 18.998403 atomic mass unit. So, what you see here is that this is going to come out in atomic mass unit. And do we know this conversion? One atomic mass unit corresponds to 931 mega electron volt of energy, okay, or more precisely 931.5 mega electron volt of energy, okay. So, we have found out what is the mass defect. Now, one only thing we have to do is we have to multiply it by 931 mega electron volt and that is going to give our answer, okay. So, I am going to skip the calculation for time's sake and obviously these are simple calculations you can do, but caution here that you can expect a bit lengthy calculation in the exam, okay. Uh, the nature of problems in nuclear physics is such that you will have to deal with a bit of calculation, alright. So, be prepared for that, alright. So, the Q value is going to come out to be 4.816 mega electron volt by the method I showed you. Is that clear guys? Is there any problem and we are live, so make use of that. If there is anything you do not understand, you want to ask. Uh, just shoot your question. All right, Anjali is asking, sir, what is the difference between neutrino and anti neutrino? Okay, so Anjali, there are a lot of particle and anti particle uh, combinations. Like here, we have an electron and a positron. Okay, 
So these particles have the same mass when I'm talking about electron and proton these have the same mass okay but the charge on it is different and they're called antiparticles of each other. When two antiparticles are going to collide with each other okay they are going to get annihilated no material is going to be left and energy is going to be released okay. Obviously uh, you will need to understand quantum mechanics to understand that in detail but just understand that they are antiparticles of each other meaning uh, if I give you an example of electron and positron, okay, they have the same mass, exact same mass, but different charge, right? Similarly, neutrino and antineutrino are also antiparticles and in any reaction, the energy and uh, momentum is conserved. So, neutrino or antineutrino has to be there to conserve the momentum, all right? That's all that we need at this stage. Uh, we don't want to go much into detail because that is going to get, uh, take us into quantum mechanics, which is a little out of scope. All right, perfect. Now let's go to the second reaction. All right, so this is beta plus decay, okay? Don't take for granted that electron is, mass of electron is going to get canceled on both sides. Now, if you do this, like the way I told you, okay? Take the mass of the nucleus. How are you going to take the mass of the nucleus? Take the mass of the atom minus the mass of the electrons. And if you do that calculation, the Q value is going to come out be something like this. Okay. So this will be mass of aluminum 25 minus mass of Mg 25. And then we'll have to subtract mass of two electrons. Okay. Then we'll get into C square. Okay. So don't get... Uh, don't take it for granted. In alpha decay, mass of electrons get cancelled from both sides. In beta decay, mass of electron gets cancelled from both sides. But in beta plus decay, mass of electron does not get cancelled from both sides. Okay, we have this term minus 2 mass of electron. Alright, so now all we have to do is do the substitution. Alright, so what is the mass of aluminium? Aluminium is 24.990432. Then we are going to subtract the mass of magnesium which is 24.985839 and then I'm going to separate the terms here. So this I'm going to multiply by C square and then I'm going to have minus 2 into Me into C square. All right. Okay. Now this is, is something I'm going to get in AMU. Do you agree? This is something I'm going to get in atomic mass unit. Okay. So whatever this comes out to be, it will be in AMU. So what I have to do is I have to multiply it by 931 mega electron volt. Okay. And then minus 2 into the mass of electron. Okay. Mass of electron and you multiply it by C square. This is a value that you should remember. It will come in handy a lot of times. Okay. And that value is 0 0.511 mega electron volt. Okay. So one electron, the equivalent energy of one electron is 0.511 mega electron volt. Okay. And that we have to multiply it by Two. Is that correct? So this is a value. If you remember, it is going to be very helpful in your calculation. Okay. Again, I'm skipping the calculation uh, because concept is important here. Calculation, I'm sure you can do. And if you do the calculation, the Q value is going to come out to be 3.254 mega electron volt. But the two important concepts that we have revised here is number one, what is Q value? And number two, that how do we write Q value for important reactions, typical reactions? So uh, my suggestion to you would be to go back and check the Q value or better derive the Q value for alpha decay, for beta minus decay, for beta plus decay, for K capture, okay, all these reactions, you can go and find out or um, derive the Q value. All right, perfect. So I think this is clear. And if this is clear, let's move on to the next question. All right, here's the next question for you. A rock is 1.5 into 10 to the power 9 year old. The rock contains U238, which disintegrates to the form lead 206. Okay, so what do we have? We have U238 disintegrating into lead 206. Correct. Assume that there was no PB206 in the rock initially, and it is the only stable product formed by the decay. Calculate the ratio of the number of nuclei of U238 to that of lead 206 in the rock. What have we been given? We have been given the half-life of uranium 238, which is 4.5 into 10 to the power 9 years. And to make our calculation a little simpler, 2 to the power 1 by 3 is given as 1.259. All right. 
Okay, so I'm going to ask you to give a shot. Okay, uh, try to solve this question. Try to think how we should proceed with this question, which basically means that we need to revise or recall what is the key concept involved in this problem. Okay, so can anyone tell me what is the key concept involved? And once you have done that, then we can certainly go ahead and solve this question. All right, so let me know. What do you think? How should we proceed with this question? Right, obviously we are talking about radioactive decay and if you remember there is a law called the law of radioactive decay. So can someone tell me what is law of radioactive decay? Can you recall that? Can you let me know? Alright, so what is law of radioactive decay? N is equal to, it's a consequence of law of radioactive decay. Radioactive decay is basically, the law of radioactive decay is this that minus dn by dt, the rate of disintegration, okay, is equal to lambda into n, is proportional to the number of active nucleides present at that time, and then we put a constant which is called the law, uh, the radioactivity constant, okay. Now, if we integrate this, the result we get is n is equal to n naught into e to the power minus lambda t, is that correct? Okay, and another way of writing this is something like this okay so we can write n is equal to n naught divided by 2 to the power t divided by t half okay so if you manipulate the terms a little bit you get something like this n is equal to n naught divided by 2 to the power t divided by t half what is n naught n naught is the initial number of nucleides what is t t is the time duration and t half is the half life Okay, so we can also use this, sometimes this makes the calculation a little bit easier. Alright, so let's try to solve this. Alright, so what do we have? Let me erase this and let me do this calculation over here. Okay, so this is uranium 238. This is getting decayed into lead 206. So at t is equal to 0. There will be n naught nuclei over here. Okay, at t is equal to 0, there are going to be n naught nuclei. And there are going to be 0 nuclei of lead. Okay. At time t, what is going to happen? At time t, the number of nucleides here is going to be n naught divided by 2 to the power t divided by t half. Is that right? Okay. So n naught was the initial number of nuclei this is the number of nucleides which are remaining so it's obvious that how many nucleides have disintegrated so n naught minus n naught divided by 2 to the power t upon t half t half i should write t half over here these many nucleides are going to have disintegrated and the number of nucleides that have disintegrated would be equal to the number of nucleides which are formed for lead is that correct okay so what ratio are we looking at we are looking at this divided by this is this clear okay what is the time given the time given is 1.5 into 10 to the power 9 years and what is half life half life is 4.5 into 10 to the power 9 year okay so we can do the substitution and what we are going to get is this is going to become n naught divided by 2 to the power 1 by 3 and this is going to become n naught minus n naught divided by 2 to the power 1 by 3 is that right Okay, so this is the ratio we require U238 upon lead 206. So let's do that. Let's do the calculation. So this is going to become N0 divided by 2 to the power 1 by 3. And then we are going to have N0 minus N0 divided by 2 to the power 1 by 3. Alright, what is this going to be equal to? Alright, if we do this calculation, we are going to be left with 1 divided by 2 to the power 1 by 3 minus 1. Okay, you can do the calculation. You can see that uh, N0 is going to get cancelled from numerator and denominator. And we are going to be left with this. And we have been given the value of 2 to the power 1 by 3. What is the value of 2 to the power 1 by 3? It is 1.259. So this will become 1 divided by 1.259 minus 1. So this is 1 upon 0 0.259. Okay, so if this would have been 0 0.25, then the answer would have been 4. 
So since this is 0 0.259, the answer is going to be a little less than 4. Okay, so the answer is going to be 3.86. Is that clear? Is this question clear? Is the concept clear? Okay, and more importantly, do you recall this? Okay, do you recall n is equal to n naught divided by 2 to the power t upon t half? This is something we can remember and this is going to come very handy in some calc uh, and going to ease a lot of calculations sometimes. Okay, it is just another form of the normal equation, but sometimes it does help us. All right, guys. I hope this is clear. Is there's any confusion? Just make use of the live session and ask away whatever your doubt is. Right? All right. Is there any confusion? Is there any problem? Ask away. And if not, let's go to the next question. All right. Let's look at the next question. All right. What do we have? A radioactive element decays by beta emission. A detector records n beta particles in 2 second and in the next 2 second it records 0.75 n beta particles. Find the mean life correct to the nearest whole number and we have been given the value of ln2 and ln3. That's the question. Alright, so read the question again. Read the question carefully and let me know what is the concept that we are going to use in this question. Quickly let me know. All right, Sanjay is asking, hi, sir, radiation in radioactivity. Uh, Sanjay, if you can uh, make your question a little more clear because I'm not able to understand it. So if you can tell me what uh, you mean to ask, if you can rephrase your question, I can surely help you. All right, so what's the concept involved over here? All right, let's say this is element X and this decays into Y and there is beta minus. Okay, beta minus is nothing but an electron. Okay, so this is very clear that if one nuclei or if one nucleus is going to disintegrate, one beta particle is going to be formed. Okay, so basically we have to see that how many nucleides have disintegrated. Do you agree? All right, let's think about that. So let me make this a little more clear. So this is X that goes into Y and then we have beta minus. All right, let's say at T is equal to zero there are n naught nuclei of x okay and how many beta particles would be emitted zero because the disintegration where it's not started it's t is equal to zero all right let's say at t is equal to two second what will be the number of nuclei remaining it is going to be n naught into e to the power minus lambda t and what is t t is two over here so this is going to become n naught into e to the power minus two lambda is that right okay so how many nuclide have disintegrated okay and the number of nuclei disintegrated would be equal to the number of beta emissions okay so what is the beta emission that has happened the beta emission that has happened is n naught minus n naught into e to the power minus 2 lambda is that clear is that correct any problem over here clear perfect now let's talk about t is equal to 4 second okay so we have recorded in first 2 second then we have recorded in next two seconds. So we are talking about from t is equal to 0 to t is equal to 4 seconds. So at t is equal to 4 seconds, what will be the number of nuclei remaining? Number of nuclei remaining are going to be n0 into e to the power minus 4 lambda. In place of t, we are going to substitute 4 seconds. So the number of nuclei remaining are n0 into e to the power minus 4 lambda. So from t is equal to 0 to t is equal to 4 seconds, how many beta emissions have taken place? Very simple n naught minus n naught into e to the power minus 4 lambda is that clear guys is that clear okay if it is not clear uh, think about it absorb it i'm giving you some time to think about it if there's any confusion let me know this is the critical part of the question okay do you get this so at t is equal to 0 n naught nuclei are there there's going to be no beta emission so beta particles is 0 at t is equal to 2 second, the number of nuclei remaining are going to be n naught into e to the power minus 2 lambda. So what are the number of nuclei which have disintegrated? That is n naught minus n naught into e to the power minus 2 lambda. And the number of particles disintegrated would be equal to the number of beta emissions. Is that correct? Okay. So that's how we have calculated for t is equal to 2 second and at the end of t is equal to 4 second. Now between these two, 
okay how many beta emissions have taken place obviously n naught minus n naught into e to the power minus 2 lambda emission beta emissions have taken place okay at t is equal to 0 nothing at t is equal to 2 second this much so in the first 2 seconds how many beta emissions have taken place n naught minus n naught into e to the power minus 2 lambda okay now in these 2 seconds how many beta emissions have taken place okay at the end of 4 second we have these many beta particles at the end of 2 second there were these many 2 pa beta particles okay so between 2 t is equal to 2 second and 4 second how many beta emissions have taken place we just have to take a difference okay we just have to take a difference so if we take a difference we'll be left with n naught into e to the power minus 2 lambda minus n naught into e to the power minus 4 lambda do you agree is that clear and what is given in the question that this over here is n okay look at this n beta particles so this quantity over here is n and this quantity over here is 0 0.75 n is that correct now all we have to do is we have to find out what is the mean life okay we'll come to mean life but let's do this calculation first we are going to come to mean life let's do this calculation so i'm going to write n naught minus n naught into e to the power minus 2 lambda divided by n naught into e to the power minus 2 lambda minus n naught into e to the power minus 4 lambda okay i've just divided both the equations and if i divide both the equation what i'm going to get i'm going to get 1 upon 0 0.75 is that correct okay now you can see that n naught from the numerator and denominator are going to get cancelled okay now let's take this calculation to the next slide okay so we here we have 1 minus e to the power minus 2 lambda and here we have e to the power minus 2 lambda minus e to the power minus 4 lambda okay this is equal to 1 upon 0 0.75 now 0 0.75 we can write it as 3 by 4 so we'll have 3 over here and we're going to have 4 over here okay now what i'm going to do is i'm going to keep this as it is and in the denominator i'm going to take e to the power minus 2 lambda as common if i take e to the power minus 2 lambda common then i'm going to get 1 minus e to the power minus 2 lambda can you see that simple calculation can you see that okay so this quantity and this quantity is going to get cancelled so we are going to get e to the power 2 lambda is equal to 4 upon 3 now what we can do is we can take log natural log on both sides so this is going to become 2 lambda is equal to ln 4 by 3 and ln 4 by 3 can i write it as ln 4 minus ln 3 and that i can write it as ln 2 ln 2 minus ln 3 is that clear okay so from here we are going to get lambda is equal to 2 ln 2 minus ln 3 and then we are going to divide it by 2 okay so this is called lambda this is the uh, di disintegration constant and what is mean life do you recall what is mean life mean life is given as 1 upon lambda okay so to find mean life all we have to do is 1 upon lambda okay so 1 upon lambda is going to be 2 divided by 2 ln 2 minus ln 3 so we have been given the values of ln 2 and ln 3 so here are the values of ln 2 and ln 3 0.6931 and 1.0986 so if you substitute the value of ln2 and ln3 you're finally going to get the mean life as approximately as 7 second is that clear all right so if you want to look at this again sure i'm going to wait over here if you want to look at this again if you have any confusion you can certainly ask me yes hyper gaming you are absolutely right shweta you are absolutely right the answer is going to be approximately seven second okay aek learning is asking sir not clear so uh, sure you can tell me what part is not clear and then i'll be happy to explain that all right but you need to be a little more precise that what exactly do you not understand all right is this clear guys any confusion any problem all right just just we are playing with the law of radioactive decay that's all there's nothing uh, in nothing very difficult we are doing doing here we're just manipulating the equations basically the law of radioactive decay that's all we are doing 
yes hyper gaming is absolutely right and all right let's move to the next problem all right this problem i remember uh, came in je advanced okay it's a good problem and uh, this problem has been uh, asked multiple times okay this concept this category of problem has been asked this situation has been asked many many times in j both j main and j advanced okay so let's look at this question all right sanjeev is asking sir can i know he can i join now yes sure why not you have already joined yeah please uh, we have not you have not lost much okay we have done two or three questions and still there are a lot of important questions that we have to do so yeah definitely join all right so here is i131 is an isotope of iodine that beta decays to an isotope of xenon with a half life of 8 days correct now a small amount of a serum labeled with i131 is injected into the blood of a person the activity of the amount of i131 injected was 2.4 into 10 to the power 5 backquerel all right clear so far now what happens it is known that the injected serum will get distributed uniformly in the blood stream in less than half an hour and after 11.5 hours 2.5 ml of blood is drawn from the person's body and it gives an activity of 115 backquerel now the total volume of the blood in the body's in the person's body in liters is approximately okay is the situation clear and for your calculation you can use this binomial uh, this approximation uh, sorry not binomial approx approximation uh, this is exponential approximation e to the power x is equal to you can nearly take it as 1 plus x if x is much much less than 1 and ln2 you can use it as 0.7 0.693 but approximately you can use it as 7 0.7 all right is the situation clear let me know if the question is not clear if you want to go through the question again go for it take some your time but understand the question properly and then think how we should proceed sanjeev you can uh, go always go back and uh, see the questions you missed after this session you can go back and see what you missed but right now i'll suggest that this is live session so continue with the session uh, because you can ask your doubts you can ask questions okay and once we are done with that you can always go back and see those questions that we did all right not a problem at all all right is the question clear guys any confusion in the question and if the question is clear i want to know from you how we should proceed with this what is the most important concept that we need to keep in mind all right let's think about this so i131 has been injected okay some quantity of i131 has been injected and you know that the radioactive disintegration the rate of radioactive disintegration or what we call activity now activity is proportional to the quantity of the substance do you agree okay activity is going to be proportional to the quantity of the substance so minus dn by dt is equal to lambda n what does it mean the number of nucleides n the number of present nucleides okay the the rate of disintegration minus dn by dt is the rate of disintegration so it is proportional to n so if you have large quantity okay the activity is going to be larger if you have smaller quantity the activity is going to be smaller do you agree all right perfect so some quant quantity of i131 okay and at that time it had an activity of 2.4 into 10 to the power 5 becquerel okay that was injected in the person's body okay now once it has been injected in the person's body it is going to go you know, get distributed uniformly in half an hour and then after that 11.5 hours has been spent okay which means that this sample of i131 has stayed in the body for how long it has stayed in the body for 12 hours do you agree okay this sample which had an activity the initial activity of 2.4 into 10 to the power 5 becquerel this stayed in the body for 12 hours which means its activity is going to decrease can we find out how much its activity is going to become can we do that of course we can do that who says we can't do that okay so activity is going to be r not into e to the power minus lambda t 
Do you agree? Okay, the relationship which we have between the number of nucleides, the same relationship we have between activity. So R is the activity at time t, R0 is the initial activity and then e to the power minus lambda t. Is that correct? Alright, so let's calculate that. So the activity at after 12 hours, okay, activity after 12 hours is going to become, what is R0? R0 is 2.4 into 10 to the power 5 back query and then e to the power minus lambda okay how do we write lambda so we can write so we have been given the half life so lambda is ln2 divided by t half do you agree t half is ln2 divided by lambda so lambda is ln2 divided by t half so for lambda i'm going to substitute ln2 divided by t half and this i have to multiply it by time okay what is time time i'm going to substitute shortly okay but i'm going to write time what is time over here time is 12 hours half an hour to get distributed plus 11.5 more hours so total 12 hours so this is going to become r is equal to 2.4 into 10 to the power 5 then we have e to the power ln2 i can write it as 0 0.7 half life is 8 days so multiplied by 8 days and then time is how much 12 hours okay now half life is given in days time is given in hours so obviously we need to take it in same unit so this 8 days i'm going to write it as into 24 hours is that correct so this r and this r is gone so this 12 and this is gone so what do we have we have r is equal to 2.4 into 10 to the power 5 then we have e to the power minus 0 0.7 divided by 16 okay now compare it with this e to the power x we can approximate it as 1 plus x if mod of x is much much less than 1 what is mod of x over here 0 0.7 upon 16 so that is 7 upon 160 is that right okay so that is we can assume is that that is much much less than 1 so we can use the approximation given over here so what does it mean the the activity after 12 hours comes out to be 2.4 into 10 to the power what was that it was i think 5 multiplied by 1 minus okay 1 minus 0 0.7 divided by 16 is that clear clear so far okay give me a thumbs up if this is clear quickly let me know if there was any confusion over here i'm going to go back okay i'm going to wait for you and let me know if this is clear because this is the most important part after that is just unitary method you're going to see but this is the important part is this clear guys all right perfect so this is going to become 2.4 into 10 to the power 5 and then we can write it as 15.3 divided by 16 correct now what is the situation in my body Let's say there are V liters of blood. Okay, in my body, let's say there are V liters of blood. So this activity is coming from my entire blood or a part of blood. Okay, because this serum that was injected has uniformly distributed in my entire blood. Is that correct? Okay. So this activity that is has that uh, that we have calculated is the activity which is going to come from my entire volume of blood. Do you agree? But what have been given over here? that 2.5 ml of blood is taken obviously you are not going to take the entire blood from the body okay you are going to take a small portion okay so 2.5 ml of blood is taken and that activity is 1.5 big quarrel. okay so what can we say simple unitary method 2.5 ml so i can write it as 2.5 into 10 to the power minus 3 liter so this much blood okay this much blood showed 115 big quarrel of activity so 1 liter of blood is going to show 115 upon 2.5 becquerel of activity so v liters of blood v liters of blood is going to show 115 divided by 2.5 into v this activity is that correct okay and isn't that what we have already ca calculated this is the quantity we have already calculated so this is going to be equal to 2.4 into 10 to the power 5 into 15.3 divided by 16 is that clear so from here what do we get we get v is equal to 2.5 
into 2.4 into 15.3 into 10 to the power 5 divided by okay we missed the I'm sorry we missed the 10 to the power minus 3 over here very sorry about that let me write that over here all right so let's go to the next page and write the equation over there let's go to the next page okay so let's remember this is 2.4 into 10 to the power 5 and then we have what 15.3 upon 16 and this is going to be multiplied by 2.5 into 10 to the power minus 3 and then divided by 115 2.5 into 10 to the power minus 3 and divided by 115 is that clear okay so this is the final equation that we have got so this is going to give us the volume of the entire blood in liter okay now this is the calculation you can do i'm skipping the calculation to save time but if you do the calculation you're going to get the volume approximately as 5 liter yes hyper gaming awesome volume of blood is going to be approximately 5 liter is that correct now this is a question which has been the data has been changed but it has been asked many times in j okay so good to revise this good to solve this and good to remember this all right any confusion over here one of the good questions this came in j advanced i don't remember the year but yeah certainly a good question all right now if there's no problem if this is everything is clear then let's go to the next problem all right let's do this now the normal activity of living carbon containing matter is found to be 15 decays per minute for every gram of carbon suppose a specimen from Mohanjadaro gives an activity of 9 decays per minute per gram of carbon estimate the age of the Indus Valley civilization the half-life of carbon 14 is 5730 year for calculation you can take ln 5 by 3 as 0.511 Think about this. Can anyone tell me what is the concept we are going to use over here? Have you heard? Uh, I'm sure you would have heard about carbon 14 dating, carbon dating. Can someone tell me in brief what is carbon dating? What is it used for? What is the concept behind carbon dating? So you know that carbon dating is used to calculate the age of ancient things historical artifacts uh, fossils so it, it it's used to calculate the age of those things okay but how does it work what is the key principle behind that can anyone tell me what's the key principle behind carbon 14 dating So carbon-14 is a radioactive isotope which means it will keep on disintegrating correct carbon-14 is a radioactive isotope it is it will keep on disintegrating but carbon-14 is created also okay carbon-14 is produced also carbon-14 is produced in the upper atmosphere okay carbon-14 is produced in the upper atmosphere then uh, it reaches the plants it reaches the animals it reaches us we consume plants we consume animals we breathe so we are taking in carbon 14 and carbon 14 is getting disintegrated as well so what have been seen is that there's an equilibrium between the amount of carbon 14 disintegrated and the amount of carbon 14 which is we are consuming okay we have reached an equilibrium so what happens is that when the uh, when a plant or when an animal it is living okay it is breathing it is living when it is living then in that case the concentration of carbon 14 remains constant but once the person dies or once an animal or plant dies then it cannot consume any more carbon 14 so after that there is no consum consumption there is only disintegration is that correct so that's what it's given in the question that the activity of a live carbon containing matter is 15 decays per minute so it is going to remain constant till the time he or she or it is alive that concentration is going to be like that but once it dies 
then the concentration is going to decrease then the activity is going to decrease okay and after certain number of years nine the activity becomes nine decays per minute okay the activity becomes nine decays per minute so when he was alive or when he or she was alive or it whatever you want to call it when this matter was alive 15 decays per minute was the concentration but after it died the concentration is going to decay and after a certain number of years it has become 9 decays per minute per gram is that right correct okay so that's how that's how we calculate the age that's how we calculate the age of the matter okay so let's say t time has passed after it died t time has passed okay so obviously i can see say that the activity today the activity now is going to be r naught into e to the power minus lambda t do you agree obviously r is equal to r naught into e to the power minus lambda t so how many decays per minute per gram so the activity right now is 9 and the initial activity was 15 and this multiplied by e to the power minus lambda t so what do we have to calculate over here we have to calculate t is that correct okay so this is going to become 9 upon 15 equal to e to the power minus lambda t so this 3 3 times 3 5 times okay so we can take the reciprocal we can take the reciprocal and we can take ln on both sides okay so this is going to give us simple calculation this is going to give us lambda t is equal to ln 5 by 3 is that correct any confusion here so lambda t is equal to ln 5 upon 3 all right so let's take this lambda t is equal to ln 5 upon 3 okay so t is going to be equal to ln 5 by 3 divided by and for lambda what can i write obviously we have been given the half life we have not been given lambda so we'll have to convert the half life to lambda i'm sorry we have to convert lambda to half life so we can write lambda as ln 2 divided by the half life is that correct okay so what do we have we have ln 5 by 3 as 0 0.511 and ln 2 you should remember the value of ln 2 it is 0 0.693 multiplied by t half and what is t half t half is 5730 years okay it is given in years all right now if you do this calculation you are going to get approximately 4225 years and that obviously is going to be the age of the fossil so in brief this is the concept behind carbon dating something we should remember all right any problem guys i hope everything is clear you are following you are solving with me and you are revising i hope this is helping you all right all good perfect all right so i hope this is clear so now we can move to the next problem all right this is an interesting problem Again, uh, this has been asked many times. This concept has been asked many times. Let's do it. Now, factory produces a radioactive substance A at a constant rate R, which decays with a decay constant lambda to form a stable substance. Okay. Do you follow this? So, we are producing, a factory is producing a radioactive substance at a rate of R okay so r nucleides per second it is producing r nucleides per second but it is radioactive so it is going to disintegrate as well and the disintegration constant or the decay constant is lambda okay once it disintegrates then it forms a stable substance is that correct okay so now if i ask you this question that what is the rate of formation of a can you answer that what is the rate of formation of a so a is getting produced but a is also disintegrating is that right okay let's think about this let's say at time t at time t we have n nuclei of a okay let's say at time t we have n nuclei of a right now so what will be the disintegration rate of disintegration minus dn by dt is what it is the rate of disintegration so it is going to disintegrate at a rate of lambda n okay but it is also getting formed at the rate of r 
So if I ask you what is the rate of formation of A, so I am writing it as dNA by dt. I am writing it as dNA by dt. This is what? This is the rate of formation of A. So how much is being formed? R, the rate, it is being formed at a rate of R. But at what rate it is going to get disintegrated? It is disintegrating at a rate of lambda n. So the net rate of formation is going to be R minus lambda n. Do you follow this? Tell me if you follow this. This is the most important part of this question. Let me know if you follow this. The rate of formation of A, dNA upon dt, is going to be R is equal to R minus lambda n. Is that correct? Okay. And we had taken this as n. Okay, at time t, the number of nuclei present, the number of nuclei of A present was n. So, this is going to be dn by dt is equal to r minus lambda n. Is that clear? It is getting formed at a rate of r and getting disintegrated as a, at a rate of lambda n. So, the net rate of formation is r minus lambda n. Is that clear? Alright, so from here, obviously, we can find out what is the relationship between n and time. So, let us do that. So this is going to become dn upon r minus lambda n and this is going to become dt and we can integrate it on both sides. Okay. So time is going to go from 0 to t and what about n? So initially it is given that the substance a was not there. At t is equal to 0, so there was no substance a. So the number of nuclei initially of substance a is going to be 0 and finally let us say it has n nuclei. So, this integration is going to go like this. Is that correct? Any problem over here? So, let us do this integration. Okay. So, this is r minus lambda n. So, the integration of r minus lambda n is going to become ln r minus lambda n and then we will have to divide it by the coefficient of n and then we will have to put the limits from 0 to n. And on the other side, we are simply going to get t. Is that correct? Alright, so what is going, this going to give us? This is going to give us ln, now let us put the limits r minus lambda n upon r. So first we put n, so it is going to become r minus lambda n minus ln, then we put n is equal to 0, so it is going to become minus ln r and ln a minus ln b is ln a by b and this is going to become minus lambda t. Okay. Now, we can take anti log on both sides and this is going to become r minus lambda n divided by r is equal to e to the power minus lambda t. From here, what do we get? From here, we get 1 minus lambda n divided by r is equal to e to the power minus lambda t and then for if we calculate for n, n is going to be equal to what? n is going to be equal to r divided by lambda into 1 minus e to the power minus lambda t. Is that correct? Okay. So, this is the first part of the problem, the number of nuclei of A. Okay. And this is, this relationship between n and t is going to give us the number of nuclei of A that are present at time t. Is that clear? Okay. So, the important thing was to be able to write the rate of formation of substance A. So, I hope that is clear. Alright, what is part B of the problem? Number of nuclei B at any instant, any time t, assuming the production of B starts at t is equal to 0. Alright, okay. So, what is the situation over here? What is the situation over here? So, A is getting converted into B and the decay constant is lambda. Okay. So, the rate of formation of B, dn by B by d, dt is going to be equal to lambda nb. Do you agree? Okay, the rate of formation of nb will be equal to lambda, sorry, it is going to be equal to lambda, no, 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 no. my bad, my bad. Right. So, the rate of disintegration of A is going to be equal to the rate of formation of B. Okay, A is getting disintegrated into B. So, the rate of disintegration of A is equal to the rate of formation of B. So, I can write that this is going to be dNB upon dt. That is the rate of formation of B and that is equal to the rate of formation of 
A. Okay, what is the rate of formation of A? The rate, uh, sorry, what is the rate of disintegration of A? The rate of disintegration of A is going to be lambda n A. Is that correct? Do you follow this? Okay, so D rate of disintegration of A is the rate of formation of B. So rate of formation of B is D n B upon D T and this is going to be equal to lambda n A. Is that correct? Okay, what is lambda n A? It is the rate of disintegration of A. All right, is that clear? Okay. So this I can write it as d n by d t is equal to lambda n a and what is n a? n a is something which we have calculated. The number of nuclei of substance a is given by this. So this is going to be r by lambda into 1 minus e to the power minus lambda t. So lambda into r by lambda into 1 minus e to the power minus lambda t. All right. So this is going to become d n is equal to this lambda is going to get cancelled and we have r and we have 1 minus e to the power minus lambda t dt and now we can integrate okay so we can integrate it from 0 to n because initially there was no substance b okay now substance b was 0 and then let's say the substance b becomes n and the time is going to go from 0 to t is that correct so this is going to become n and this will be equal to r and then if we integrate this so integrate 1 we are going to get t minus if we integrate e to the power minus lambda t we are going to get e to the power minus lambda t then divided by minus lambda and here we will have to put the limits from 0 to t is that correct okay now if you put the limits from 0 to t and if you manipulate the terms a little bit then you are going to get nb the number of nucleides of b formed as r into lambda t minus 1 plus e to the power minus lambda t divided by lambda is that clear Okay, so what was the concept here? Very simple concept. Okay, the rate of disintegration of A will be equal to the rate of formation of B. That's it. That's all we have used. Is that correct? Okay, so if you do this, uh, the only thing I have not done over here is because it's very, very simple. You just have to put the limits and you're going to get this result. Is that clear? Any problem? All right, so I hope this is clear and this is one of important questions. This concept has been asked multiple times in J. All right, let's look at another problem. All right, you're ready for this problem? Here we go. A radioactive nucleus can decay by two different processes. The half life for the first process is T1 and that for the second process is T2. Show that the effective half life T of the nucleus is given by 1 by T is equal to 1 upon T1 plus 1 upon T2. Okay, so this is something called simultaneous disintegration. Okay, this is something called simultaneous disintegration. So let's say there are n number of nuclei. Okay, there are n number of nuclei at a certain time. So it is going to get disintegrated in two ways. It is going to get disintegrated with a decay constant of n1 and it is also going to decay with a decay constant of lambda 2. Okay, so let's say it forms substance A and substance B. So what will be the form, what will be the rate of formation of substance A? Okay, what will be the rate of formation of substance A? It is going to be lambda 1 into n. Do you agree? Okay, this is n. Okay, what are the number of nuclides present? n. So what will be the rate of formation of A? The rate of disintegration of n through this process. And through this process, the decay constant is lambda 1. Okay, so the rate of disintegration into A is going to be lambda 1A and the rate of disintegration into B is going to be lambda 2N. Okay, so what is the total rate of disintegration? The total rate of disintegration is the total rate of disintegration and that I'm going to call lambda N that is going to be the total rate of disintegration. This is equal to lambda 1N plus lambda 2N. Is that clear? So n is the total number of nuclei, lambda I am saying is the effective decay constant. So the rate of disintegration of n, the net rate of disintegration of this substance is going to be lambda n. And what is that going to be equal to? Lambda 1 n plus lambda 2 n. So n gets cancelled on both sides and now lambda we can convert it in terms of half life because we have to give this relationship in terms of half life. Alright, so let's do that. 
So what do we get? For lambda, we are going to write ln2 divided by the half-life, the effective half-life. This is equal to for lambda 1, we are going to write it as ln2 divided by lambda divided by t1. And t1 is the half-life for first decay. And then this is going to become ln2 divided by t2. And the t2 is the half-life for the second simultaneous process. So lambda ln2 is going to get cancelled. And we are going to get this result. 1 by t is equal to 1 upon t1 plus 1 upon t2. This is another very con uh, important concept. This is called simultaneous decay. And there have been many questions asked on this concept. So we should remember this concept as well. All right. So that is it in this session. I hope this was helpful for you. And I'm saying again and again that modern physics, you should not leave. Okay. So uh, go through these questions again, go through your notes again, revise it well. And tomorrow we are going to be live with another session on nuclei and radioactivity where we are going to solve previous year and important questions. All right. So see you in the next session. See you tomorrow. Don't forget to tune in. And till then, keep practicing, keep getting better and have fun been learning. Thanks for watching.